Hello, my wonderful people, viewers and subscribers all over the world. This is Okute Daily Talk coming your way this very afternoon, being um, Wednesday, December 21st in the year 2022. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please endeavor to do that as soon as possible. Turn on the notification button so that you will be, be the first to be notified. Each time I post something new or will go live on this channel or any other channel that is related to Kute Daily Talk. Without not taking much of our time, please tighten your seatbelts. Let's go straight into the news of this very afternoon. Scores killed as Nigerian Air Force Army battle terrorist in Zamfara State. Scores of people, including gallant security officers, were reportedly killed in a recent confrontation with terrorists in Zamfara State. Reports of them by, uh, by Okute News reveal that men of the Nigerian Air Force and Army engaged terrorists recently in Malale Village in the Dansadao local government area of Zamfara State. It was reported that Air Force men during a series of airstrikes undertaken by the air component of operation had indulged to allow the terrorists at their hideouts in the village. The military is said to have mobilized troops and fighter jets for the attack on December 17, 2022. The troops, according to reports, recorded a major victory after hitting terrorists, causing unrest in different parts of the state. The report said the bandits, while attempting to escape from the airstrikes, ran into Motunji village, adding that over 40 of them were killed. I know that is what they will do. They will like to take shade with the, the, the villagers. And that is what uh, the result of it, that they amount to the lose of uh, more uh, innocent lives in the process. They know what they are doing. They, I thought that they used to stay in a, in a forest. Because of airstrikes and other things, they have to move closer to the village in, uh, in form of uh, being security to the villagers. Why the villagers will also be paying them protection fee, according to them. And this protection fee is not a small money. Sometimes it amounts to millions of nairas on the process. The terrorists, angered by the development, reportedly launched a repressor and led a siege to a military convoy en route to Malale and opened fire. Luckily, no life was lost except a soldier who sustained an injury. The soldier is positive, positively responded to treatment, the report said. Other sources who confirmed the event to punch said terrorist kingpins Halilu, Jan, Buzu, Tuji, and Adamo Aleru are making efforts to reinforce their colleagues on the battlefield after the devastating airstrikes. I know that uh, this, uh, this particular uh, reinforcement now, the, the communities in those areas are, will be the ones to suffer all this because they will not go after those people pursuing them, they will only revert back to the gullibles, that is the poor masses in the society, which is very, very bad and it is disheartening and very, very sad at that. If when government is attacking you, why can't you revert back and attack the government instead of attacking the innocent citizens who knows nothing about the war? that you are fighting with the government. I am sending this message across to all those ones who said, who claim to be powerful men, who claim to be strong men, who claim to be, uh, 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 that is, all and all, go after the ones pursuing you. Leave the gullibles, leave the poor ones. Don't allow them to partake on your fight with the government. Not tomorrow now, you will go to one community now, open fire and begin to kill innocent people who have never uh, uh, ordered for any airstrike or whatever. So you people have to take note. Halilu, Buzuzu boys in particular, were sighted along uh, Dankurumi on their way to Malale. Why those of Adamu, Halilu, were seen at uh, Yagada, a border between Dansadao and Gusau Emirates, waiting for sunrise to move to the battleground. One of the source noted, however, an indigen of uh, Mutunji village in the Mara local government area of Zamfara state, Musa Abubakar, 
told reporters that the bandits killed at least 10 soldiers in a confrontation. According to him, the soldiers were on their way to, to Mutunji to complement the Air Force in bombarding the bandits, adding that some bandits who locked who looked at a, a spot on the road ambushed them. He explained further that the bandits immediately after sighting the soldiers came out of their hideout and opened fire, killing 10 of them on the spot. He said the bandits, after killing the soldiers and sighting the fighter jets, rushed to Mutunji village and hide in the market where many people were busy transacting their businesses. Have you seen it? Have you seen have you seen what these people are causing to the, to the general public? When the fighter jet arrived in the village, he dropped a bomb and six eight locals were killed, while several others were seriously injured and taken to a hospital for treatment. Another who identified himself as Saedu Ishaka told the news uh, platform that he was in the market when the bomb was dropped by the fighter jet, adding that he narrowly escaped death. Ishaka who combined some injured uh, persons to Yarema Bakura Specialist Hospital said bandits came to their village in a large numbers. When the aircraft approached the village, we just had a heavy sound in the market and many shops went in flames. I narrowly escaped being killed, but I, I saw several dead bodies in front of me. I was among the people who took part burying 68 persons who were killed by the bomb blast, he added. A journalist who visited the Yareman uh, Bukora Special, Specialist uh, Hospital Guzo claimed he saw the dead bodies of the 10 soldiers being conveyed to a mortuary by the hospital staff. The dead bodies were brought in an ambulance by the military around 3 p.m. on Monday. He said the state commissioner on security, DIG Maman Safi retired who visited the hospital to see the slain soldiers and the injured persons described the incident as most unfortunate. Safi sympathized with the families of the soldiers and those injured. He said the incident happened at a time when the security situation is considered to be improving in Nigeria. Soldiers uh, killed guests as siblings clash at funeral. A guest, David Chinonso, has, has been reportedly killed at Owode, a Gombo community in the Ibeku, Okibeju, Leji, Leki area of Lagos State, after some military men stormed the burial of one of late Matthew Ebu. The uniformed men Numbering 15 were said to have arrived at the venue in an attempt to stop the corpse from being in, entered into the premises of the deceased. This led to a confrontation as one of the deceased sons, Victor, was hit in the head with an iron, while Chinonso was shot in the chest. The children of the deceased, who spoke to Punch Metro, accused their sibling Richard of leading the attack, which happened, happened on Saturday. November 9 of 2022. One of the children, Victoria, Abim Victoria Abimbola, said Richards was planning to acquire their father's house and had demanded that the deceased be buried in their hometown in Akwaibom State. She said, My father gave birth to 10 children, and before he died, he told us that Richard, his second son, built a house for him in our village. We were happy when uh, first had uh, ha okay when we first uh, had Richard until Richard told him that the house he built was in exchange for my father's house in Lagos. The rest of us disagreed with the decision, and uh, we told him that the house is the only property our father has has in Lagos, and it is more like a family house to every one of us. After that. He started putting pressure on our father, who later fell sick and died on September 5th. After our father's death, he and Richard prevented us from burying him in the house. He also tried to stop us 
with policemen the day we took the cops from the mortuary for burial, but we resisted him. Another family member, Victor, said he was attacked while trying to interrogate the military officers who stormed the burial. He said some uniformed men came in the morning to stop us from burying our father, but since they did not provide any documents that warranted their visit, we sent them away. So, we were holding a Thanksgiving service in the church adjacent to our father's house when the officials returned with five military men. They entered the premises and started to destroy property. When I stepped out of the church, I saw them assaulting the 15-year-old son of my brother, Daniel, by the name. By the time I asked what happened, one of them hit me with an iron rod on my head while another hit me with a club from behind. I fell immediately. Some of the guests who saw what happened confronted them and while trying to chase them, one of the uniformed men fired a, a shot which hit David Chinonso, who died on his way to the hospital. Richard, however, denied the allegations, saying he acquired the property with the consent of his siblings. He said our father needed money to build a house in his hometown in Aguaibo and relocate there. So he told my brother David, who is his first son, to buy the house so that the property would, would stay with the family. But he did not. Then in 2020, my father asked all of us to jointly acquire the house, but others complained about funds. When my brother Victor suggested an external buyer, with the intention of getting a commission, my father declined and approached me to acquire the house. He also told me, he also told them, and they all agreed. So I struggled to provide a fund, build the house, and got the documents. Since then, they started making financial demands on me, and because I could not provide them, they conspired against me and my father. My father told me how they threatened to kill him bury him and use his grave to claim the property. I told them if they did not want me to take possessions of the house, they should return the money, but they did not. And since my father insisted on being buried in his hometown before he died, I reported the matter to the police. They were invited for questioning, but they did not show up. Why my elder brother moved into the house with his family, they also rushed to bury my father there. That was how the, the relevant authorities I reported the matter to moved against them and not me. The state police public relations officer, Benjamin Hundoyen, confirmed the incident. He said, we are aware and the case has been transferred to the state criminal investigation department, Bantiaba, and the military officers were invited and they provided the information needed and their details. I will do a follow-up to confirm the update, according to him. Germany begins return of 1,130 looted Benin bronze. Nassau has returned them one after the other. It remains France and the rest of them. This is what you people came to our land, thief all, and give us Christianity that has never helped us other than spoiling the, 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 the land. England and so. The German government on Tuesday commenced the repatriation of 1,130 looted the Benin bronze to Nigeria. At a ceremony held in Abuja, German Minister of Foreign Affairs, Anna Lena Babok, symbolically handed over 22 of the 1,130 looted aircraft to his Nigerian counterpart, Geoffrey Onyema, and the Minister of Information and Culture. Laji, Lai Mohammed. <laughs> Are you sure Mohammed, Lai, Lai, Lai Mohammed will not say this thing and give excuses to the to the DC? Or even say they will tell Benin people to come and bear this thing with the money. <laughs> the event was witnessed by the German Minister of State for Culture, Claudia Roth, the German ambassador to Nigeria, Annette Gunther, and over 50 top officials from Germany. Mohammed said the event will remain in uh, indelible. In the history of mankind, when Germany traded the blows 
in the doing right to return the looted aircraft. Adding that, 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, nobody could have anticipated these bronze returning to Nigeria because the obstacles to achieving repatriation were seemingly insurmountable, according to uh, uh, Lai Mohammed. But today, with the pioneering gesture of a friendly nation, Germany, the story has changed. He said that the federal government was embarking on an infrastructural development around the National Museum in Benin City. The minister called on other nations, institutions, museums, and private uh, collectors still holding on to Nigerian uh, antiquistic to release them. That is all you need to know about the current uh, 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 returning of the aircraft from German who stole this thing over 125 years ago. Oba Obinin received 2.5 million pounds looted aircraft returned after 125 years. Aircraft worth 2.5 million pounds have been handed over to the Oba Obinin or by a way to by the president, Major General Mohamed Buhari retired 125 years after they were looted by British troops during the invasion of Benin Kingdom. He <laughs> he, voila. The return aircraft comprising of a Cochrane, Opa, Oko Opa, and uh, an Oba head, Uwevun Elao, were repatriated from Cambridge University. Jesus College and the University of Aberdeen, Scotland, respectively. They were handed over to the monarch by the Nigerian High Commission to the United Kingdom, Mr. Tunji Ishola, on behalf of the President. About 10,000 aircrafts were said to have been looted from the Benin Kingdom in 1879 and held in different parts of the world, especially Europe. While receiving the cultural items, or by a way to say the bronzes were more than mere art, but were mostly of religious significance, adding that the two art crafts would be returned to where they, they right, rightly belong. The Oba, in his address, read by his younger brother, Prince Abatise Erudiowa, said there was a calculated plan to attack Benin for its territorial dominance and treasures. This, he said, resulted in the destruction of a civilization which equaled or even surpassed that of the aggressors, he said. He said it was thought that the kingdom, totally decimated and in ruins in the aftermath of the war, would not rise again. After by the grace of God and the ancestors, the kingdom is still standing. The current conversation is about restitution, and that is the international scholars and most museums now agree that keeping stolen items is immortal and illegal. Then, Major Sio, my question on this uh, return of aircraft is this: that uh, diamond, uh, yes, diamond, which uh, the, is sitting on the head of uh, the queen. I heard that that diamond is from is is being looted from South Africa. Can they return it? At least now the queen has died. No one is going to wear that crown again. What they have now is King Charles number three. Can that, that one also be returned back to where it came from? Well, I still need the answers uh, in the comment section. If you know what to answer, please endeavor to drop it there. I will get back to you. While thanking the president and others who facilitated the return of the art crafts, he called on genuine collaborators to join in the push for the repatriation of others. The Benin monarch, however, appealed to those Genuinely interested in the cause to join the kingdom in the interest of peace, tranquility, and substance of his cultural heritage. Earlier, Ishola said he was directed by the president to formally hand over the aircraft to the Oba, emphasizing that the items worth over 2.5 million pounds. He added, I want to thank the British government for preserving the aircraft. To still be in the same form they were there they were when they were taken 
in 1897. They are still remain the same. Try. Try, 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 try. Welcome back, our art craft. We don't need the money. There's more to gain than money. I am eager to return to Daura. President Muhammad Buhari speaking. The President, Major General Muhammad Buhari, retired. On Tuesday, said he was looking forward to returning to Daura, his hometown, in the next five months at the end of his tenure. In a statement signed by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Garobashew, Buhari made the comments when he received members of uh, Jemiyat and Sardin at the State House, Abuja. Buhari, who turned members of the group for their fervent prayers uh, for his administration and the country commended the Islamic group for promoting religious tolerance in the country. The statement is titled, President Buhari, Laos Islamic Group for Promoting Religious Tolerance. Shehu stated, Buhari, President Buhari, who thanked members of the group for their fervent prayers for his administration and the country, said he was looking forward to returning to Daura, Kassena State, his hometown, in the next five months at the end of his tenure. The president told the group, led by the Kualafia of the Jimayat and Sardin, Shakir Mohammed Kualafia Nias, that he valued so much their roles in promoting stability in several African countries. During the courtesy visit by the Islamic group, Shekia Tijan and Shehu had the Alumatroya of five prayers for the president, the country, and Nigerians while the recitation of the Holy Quran was conducted by Shekia Abdullah El Amin. I will step down as Twitter CEO if, according to Elon Musk, Elon Musk said he will resign as the chief executive officer of Twitter once he finds a replacement in an apparent response to a pool he launched that suggested users wanted him to step down. Why? I don't know. Musk has fully owned Twitter since October 27 and has repeatedly courted controversy as the CEO, second half of his staff, readmitting far-right figures to the platform suspending journalists and trying to charge for previously free services. Okay, that is the problem. Okay, the, those things you see freely before is now it's about to charge them <laughs> that you have to pay. After all, he bought the Twitter, so you need to also pay for the services. I will resign as the CEO as soon as I find someone foolish enough to take the job. Musk tweeted, saying he will then only run software and server team, uh, teams at Twitter. In the poll result, which we are posted on Monday, 57% uh, of the voters, or 10 million vo uh, votes, favored Musk stepping down just weeks after he took ownership of the, of the company for $44 billion. Musk has used the Twitter polls to take other decisions on the platform including the reinstatement of the account of former United States President Donald Trump and other suspended users. Earlier this week, he used a laughing emoji to ridicule a report he was in sight of someone to take over as boss of Twitter and tweeted that no one wants the job who can actually keep Twitter alive. Analysts have pointed out that the stock price of his electric car company Tesla has slumped by one third since most Twitter takeover, and some suggest Tesla's board was putting pressure on him to quit his Twitter role. Elon Musk, you can quit now. Hmm? Finally, a good step in the right direction to end his painful nightmare situation for Tesla investors, said Wade Bush analyst Dan Ives on Tuesday. In, in decision, in a okay, in discussion with users after posting his latest poll, Musk had renewed his warnings that the platform could be heading for bankruptcy, policy by poll. The unpredictable entrepreneur posted his poll on his resignation shortly after trying to extricate himself from yet another controversy. On Sunday Twitter, 
On Sunday, Twitter users were told they will no longer be able to promote content from other social media sites. But Marx came to reverse course a few hours later, writing that the policy would be limited to suspending accounts only when that account's primary purpose is promotion of competitors. The attempted ban uh, prompt House of dis the Disapproval and even the most Twitter co-founder Jack Dorsey, who had backed Mark's takeover. Analyst Eves noted that advertisers have run for the hills and left Twitter squarely in the red link, potentially on the track to lose roughly $4 billion per year. Shortly after taking over the platform, Musk announced it will charge a dollar per month to verify account holders' identities, but he had to suspend the Twitter Blue plan after the, an embarrassing rush of fake accounts it has seen being relaunched. On November 4, with Musk saying the company was losing $4 million a day, Twitter let off half of its 7,500 strong stars. Musk also restated Trump's account, though the former U.S. Uh, president indicated he had no interest in the platform and said Twitter will no longer work to combat COVID-19 disinformation. In recent days, he suspended the account of several journalists after complaining some had published details about the movement of his private jet, which he claimed could endanger his family. Some of these uh, suspended accounts have since been reactivated. On Monday, the head of the European Parliament, Speaker Robert Mosola, sent a letter to Musk inviting him to testify before the legislature has spoken, uh, as post, uh, spokesman said. The Parliament has no power to compare Musk to turn up, and, and uh, his response was not immediately known, according to the invitees. Let's take the last but not the least. The truck driver kills recycle rider hoodlums loot rice. There was a tension at a, a camp market in the Itu local government area of Akwaibom State following the murder of a recycle rider by a truck driver. Market source told Punch Metro that trouble started when the house truck driver, while trying to nego negotiate space to park for easy offloading of his bags of rice, was obstructed by the tricycle operator and the tables used by traders to display their wares, resulting in a traffic snare. It was gathered that uh, in the ensuing uh, confusion, the driver climbed down from his truck with a machete, which he used on the tricycle rider, who died due to the SS -S blood loose child. An eyewitness is Mr. Akon Basi said the incident happened around 7 p.m. on Sunday and lasted for about an hour before policemen arrived at the scene to rescue Cam. He said the truck driver was angry, angry because of the refusal of the tricycle operator and business owners to clear their wares off the road for the truck to be properly parked for the rice to be offloaded. When he alighted from the truck to clear the road, he met stiff re re resistance, and what he could do was to bring out a machete and, in the process, cut the tricycle man in the head. Hoodlums were said to have used the opportunity to loot the rice and burn the truck, and the driver fled the scene. Our correspondent learned on Tuesday that the market, which was shut down, uh, which was shut over the incident, had been reopened and taken over by the operatives directly from the nearby at Etam police station. I hope they, they will not title this one now uh, Biafrance or IPOP or ESN because that is exactly what they used to do. The leader of the Hausa and Fulani community in the state, Alaji al Hassan Sadauki, while, using, uh, while suing for peace, appealed to law enforcement agencies to be proactive and stop the crisis from snowballing into an ethnic war. The state police public relations officer, Odiko McDonald, promised that the command will investigate the incident. That is all we have for us this very uh, Wednesday afternoon. 
until I come your way again, I still remain your one and only. Ukuta Daily Talk, bringing to us this broadcast. In case you are not subscribed to my channel, please endeavor to do that as soon as possible. Make sure you turn on that notification icon so that you will be notified each time we go live or we post something new on our channel or any other channel that is related to Okute Daily Talk. Please endeavor to be sharing any of my content. Anyone you watch that you like from your mind, make sure you share it to the general public so that they may be also be aware of what is happening in every news and crane of the country. I still remain Okute Daily Talk bringing to us this broadcast. My station is all about speaking the truth and nothing but the truth. Speaking to you the undiluted truth about the things of life, about the Nigerian country, about what is happening in the world and also Africa at large. Remain blessed and may the Almighty Tuko Kiabiyama bless the words of our hand from this day onwards. Amen. He say and he say and he say. Bye for now. Kemesiano.